Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Bob Chapman here, and this is the Tiger Hour. We're down 103 in the Dow at 33,877. One of the reasons why we started to get very cautious is because all the metrics that we had were met. One of the most important was this measured move. This is something in my webinar a week ago, Wednesday. Um, we spent uh, all five hours just going through all these variations. There's a pattern that I call the large rectangle formation where price comes down pretty sharply and then it starts to slow move up, a stair-step move uh, with higher highs and mostly higher lows until it gets to very close on the fourth highest peak, peak D, or maybe it's uh, uh, just under, but it could be just right on or just above the previous high of importance where you started this, basically the rectangle formation, large rectangle, which becomes a kind of lopsided cup. I call it the gravy cup pattern. In this case, to 33,272. But it went to peak D with a little doji candle on the 1st of August, but the technicals were so strong, I wasn't prepared to change our long position of the diamonds at all. I, I, I said you could take a little bit off, but in fact, what we're trying to do is to hold on as long as possible to core positions, just like we held on to, we're still holding on to the core position from the law of 2020. Um, and that was the 23rd of, uh, uh, 23rd of March. Uh, and uh, most importantly, what we're looking at in this particular uh, iteration is that it then double topped and my target was also the 200 period exponential moving average. Remember, I make a big deal about 200 period moving average you don't need it when you don't need it, but as you get closer to it, it becomes like a magnet. It just attracts the price and it can track the price for quite a while as the price basically yo-yos up and down and up and down until it either changes course by continuing in the direction it came from, uh, by reversing from the direction it's come from after consolidation moving high, or it deflects lower or deflects high if it's testing it on the way down. So in this particular case, the 200 period moving average of 33,190s right now, it was just a little bit lower than that before, um, is now your basic support. And then what happened is the, the technicals were still so strong that we then gapped up above the 200 period moving average about seven sessions ago, six sessions ago, and continued. And now I've called this leg F slash C. That means... Either you're getting real close to a sharp pullback or there's enough residual strength to maybe make a nominal higher leg, 34,282 or higher, and then start a, a deeper consolidation or the consolidation starts immediately. Well, <laughs> based on many factors, uh, it, it's just the proof of the pudding is going to be in the pricing. All you can do is the homework. And say in this particular case, there's a particular candle that I look at, one of the few candles that I use, uh, something I, I discovered. And it's that when you get a little doji candle at, a, at basically at a, either a low or at a high, that's, that's, a visual, uh, that's a visual icon of something about to happen, either a continuation pattern or maybe a turnaround. And in this particular case, the low of the 17th of June at 29,653, was exactly the, the tiniest doji candle that we had since the top was made back um, in the 32,900s uh, back in June. So that was a really important impetus. And it's the day we went long. Uh, we've been long a number of times, sometimes stopped down a little bit and then got back in. But most importantly is we've taken a little bit off of the core position and Looking to see, I haven't started a, a, a reverse uh, uh, position. That would be either a dog DOG one to one, or a DXD two to one, or an SDOW three to one to the downside, because the, the, for years, decades, uh, well, actually for over forty years, I've made a daily call on the Dow. So I, my impetus and, and emphasis is always on the Dow. Dow 30, I've changed it over the years to say this is not the industrials at any, this, 
you can't even remotely consider it the Dow Industrials. Basically, it's the Dow 30. It's such a mix. It's a perfect mix, as far as I'm concerned, of, of the U.S. economy. And that's all. It's just like it's a fund, basically, a 30-stock 30, 30 fund. And more importantly, and of course, big caps, and more importantly, what we got was the silent doji yesterday. And that's basically telling me, now you've got to be a little bit careful because there's a, 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 there could be a trend change or a continuation change. The little sign in Doji after that peak E right there on the 9th of uh, August had a gap up the following day. So that was a continuation pattern. So we'll see what happens here. And most importantly, if you look at, if you go through many of the Dow stocks, you'll see some of them have had a fabulous move. Some of them haven't moved very much and some of them have moved down. <clears throat> and then you've had isolated cases where at Disney, spirals to the upside, touches the 200 period moving average, makes a silent doji yesterday. Or well, no, that was a doji uh, and leg F, 125.95 uh, and 126.48 on the 16th of June. So the fact that Disney has started to move out of this big cup position and break into territory it hasn't been in for months, and that's the area from 115 up, to this 126 uh, high yesterday. Now what we're looking at is there could be a digestive phase and maybe it even comes back and fills the gap somewhat. But this so far is how we've seen the market move consistently for not just months but years where stocks that have just been beaten down suddenly have a flurry of activity and as they're having activity that's positive, other stocks in that same group really take a dive. And that ameliorates the, um, the, both the downside and the upside. And that's the reason why you're stalling in some cases right at this 200 period exponential moving average. So to make it as simple as possible, oh, I also wanted to show you in, this, uh, in the different patterns that we look at. And this is what we sp studied last uh, uh, week ago, uh, Wednesday. And that archive is there for anyone. There, and there wasn't a time, it wasn't time like I usually do for webinars like this or webinars for my subscribers was timed at a, poten a potential turning point in the market. It had nothing to do with that. It had to do with measured moves, how you can pace them, how you can count the bars on the left, how you can count the bars on the right, where you got to choose. In fact, let me just show this. This morning at about, what time was it? It must have been at about, yeah, I'll give it to you right now. <clears throat> Yeah, it was right there at about um, a little often, around about 9 o'clock. The S&P E-mini was trading in the 10-minute chart at 4280, 42.79. <coughs> and I said, wow, this is exactly like a pattern that we looked at. <coughs> but on the upside, uh, the Wednesday week uh, webinar, let me just type this in <coughs> because I've done a new thing now. For all these years and hundreds, thousands of charts or hundreds and hundreds of trades, <laughs> say in the E-mini, I'd always drawn the lines, but I'd never actually notated. In other words, given an actual time and price, which was being shown on the chart. Now, type B. 42.63 by 10.10 a.m. by this measured move from the left to the right. And at 10.10 a.m., it went to 47.64. Seven, uh, 42.63 was the target, and it went to uh, 42.64. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vistagold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vistagold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vistagold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vistagold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so just to be a review that, someone said that it got a little scratchy as I was doing it at the end of the commercial there. I, I didn't mean to talk into the commercial, but my sound uh, went, it disappeared and then came back. It was my fault there. Uh, yeah, so my target was 4263. That was the low right here. Uh, at 4.30 a.m., or was it? No, yesterday, 4.30, at 42.63, round number low. And I did this this movement over the 200-period moving average. Then I did a measured move from the left to the right on a particular candle that I always use if I can't do it visually. But sides, which you know that when I'm looking at the left side and right side, I, I do a vertical a price match. Uh, most importantly, what I'm looking at is in the middle of that, could I do a left side, right side price time match? So in this particular case, from the high of that peak E to the high of peak F, you can see the MACD was already turning down. Stochastic was way down. A really good hint that you're going to be coming down. And once you crossed underneath the 200 period moving average for more than two bars, it said, uh oh, yes, yeah, some weakness you've got to respect. So that said that that 40, uh, 4263 level, which was a target, was missed by one point because it went to 42.64 round number low. Now it's having a little bit of a bounce. I just want to show. You. Now the other thing is, <clears throat> I like to talk about what's working and I like to talk about what's not working. It's really important, uh, at least for me, that I'm able to talk about. Excuse me. <clears throat> that is, if the voice uh, runs smoothly. I look at, like to talk about techniques that work and techniques that don't. I talk about spoken about two things the other day. One was Shopify. And I said it's just a it's just a horrible stock. It's done everything wrong. But there was a chance that from the rectangle formation, the long narrow rectangle formation at the bottom, I have a much greater history with so many char charts making long rectangles weekly, sometimes even monthly, but definitely daily charts at the top going sideways in a trading range and then spiking to maybe a peak D, new recovery high above the trend line, and then coming down. And then for the rule of thumb is if it breaks halfway into the middle of the rectangle, be careful because it could come all the oh, Let me just show you the chart here. Actually, I could show you the chart right here because one of these did it. Uh, was it a 10 minute? One, one of these. Oh, there it is, right in the two-minute chart. 
Look, it went to this rectangle formation. It went to a peak D and then it pulled back. And my rule of thumb is in this big long rectangle formation, this is a two minute E mini. Um, if, and the reason why I like to use it both, either it's trading, but also it, it, it's traveling almost 24 hours a day, except for weekends. Um, there are a couple of uh, places where it, it doesn't. Um, if it breaks halfway into the rectangle support, there's a real chance not only will it touch, but break. The, the base, and that's exactly what happened here in the two-minute chart. So I was anticipating that there could be the reverse action finally as Shopify just after pounding and pounding and being beaten down, every single opportunity was just taken as a shorting opportunity. And then it got stuck in this range from May, beginning of May at 42.49 as a high. And then uh, a week later, the low of 30. Point eighty one. It did go touch below that. Went to twenty nine seventy two. My thinking was that could be the reverse. That now you've got the the long rectangle at the bottom, and now you could break out to the top. Well, we went to the peak D, and now we've pulled back. And in fact, we're now testing the halfway market. So we had a position. I did say yesterday that even though it's down a little bit, let's just take something off. And then we'll have the stop, and the stop got taken out. So in this particular instance. Um, that was an experiment in time because it did pretty much what I was looking at in the time. It went sideways. It did break to a D, but my thinking was this time it would break to a D, pull back only momentarily. And then if it could trade in the 46, 48 area for the first time, it got to challenge uh, all the resistance levels. And the only thing left was this one here with a gap down afterwards on the 4th of May. Of 4680. Uh, sorry, was that 4880? It was 4880. So um, it didn't do that. So we have to wait. So as I said, I, I, I'm always prepared to talk about <laughs> what doesn't work as well as what works. <clears throat> Got this frog in the throat. All right, there it is. <clears throat> okay, so I had a couple of questions to come in. <clears throat> Uh, one of them is, let me just find it, let me go back to my, yeah, so how, how important is the peak D? Well, you got your peak D here on Shopify. We were looking at SAVA, I was asked about it yesterday, SAVA, did I type that incorrectly? No, I left out the A. Uh, Sava, this is Cassava, uh, bio, bio, Biotech, Alzheimer's, Cassava Sciences, SAVA is a symbol. It's up 2.71 at 28.40, but what did it do? It went from a low in the 14s or maybe the 13s, all the way from July the 27th at 13.84, it went to 34.87. Now that is just a huge, 20, I mean, that is a huge move in leg D. And then what happened? It went above the 200 period moving average and then it pulled back. And then today it had one attempt to break and it went to the high today of 33.33, 33.37 is the 200 period moving average and now it's pulling back. So the way that I like to look at these particular um, techniques that I have built over the many, many years, decades, is that at a D other things can happen. It's your target price, in, a target letter in the Chapman Week methodology, but then you've got to be careful. So I got another question that came in. Um, why did you like SNPS so much in the, in the uh, newsletter today? You mentioned it. Well, look at this. I didn't even know about this. I'd seen the name, but I've no, maybe a long time ago I followed it, but just because of the name Synopsis Inc. I, I didn't know what. I thought maybe Synopsis, maybe it's biotech. And anyway, it turns out electronic design, automation, semiconductor, IP solutions and services, all time high. This morning, it just a 391.14 was all time high four days ago. And today, the round number high of 391 is something to monitor. And it's pulling back eight points from the challenge. Uh, it's at 372.72. Now, I like this very much because it's in the semiconductor area. It's gone above the beautiful cup formation. This, this is history. I drew this after I saw the stock. Uh, announced as with very good earnings. So this is nothing that I did prior to that, but it's the work. It's the work I always do. 
I try to find the lowest low bar and say, can I get the number of bars from the left side high down to this low bar to match the ones on the right? If it looks like, I mean, over here, it looked to me like it was a possibility. I wasn't there. I only saw it yesterday for the first time to notate. So this is what I would have done. There's a rule of thumb. Where do I take the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line? There's a certain thing. There's this gray line. And, and maybe I usually make it green, so I'll make it green now because we're doing this live. And look what happened. It goes up, up, hits the resistance, pulls back, and then screams up and hits the resistance once, twice, and three times right above the left side, right side price time match in a shorter period of time. And I can ha I have to call this uh, now. I can, now because it's made the high, I can call it an E smash B, and I'll explain why for those of you who are asking the question. I'll be back. The Dow's down 86, oh no, 66. SB's down on the seven. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, DXAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So I just wanted to show you this, this beautiful cup formation. This is one that I, uh, I hadn't done, at least to my knowledge, in either a very long time or at all. But I saw that the earnings came out and the, the way it responded was extremely positive. Now it's down seven. But... This is in an area, and the reason why I want you to bring it up is the semiconductors. This is probably not in the semiconductor index, the SMHs. But look, where would you expect the Dow's down 70, S&P's down 4? Where would you expect the semis to be today? Down? Nope, they're up $1.60 at 240. So there's still what I call residual strength. The chapter wave, we're always looking for a D. That's where you have to do a new series of analysis because... Anything can happen at a peak D. Here we are. We did this double top at a peak D, just above the 200-period moving average. 
Um, once again, and then it failed to cross above it. It needs to get to the 247 area and hold to say, hey, I'm trying to leave the 200 period move, moving average away on the upside. And I, I love the fact that the uh, weekly chart has made, oh, is that a nominal B? Uh, yes, we've got a nominal B. Now, this is a pattern that I don't like at all if at peak A, you make just a fractional pullback, then a fractional new recovery high for the B, and then you take out the candle on the left that has a trough, uh, the, the closest trough. In this particular case, it's the one all the way down from uh, a week ago, and that was at 226.73. So if at any time in August there's a close below 225, that says now you've got to monitor this uh, weekly chart much more closely. That, and that corresponds to a bunch of things that I wanted to talk about today with, with questions that are coming in. And I'll do that. Let's see if I, I – I'll, I'll spread it out. If I don't get to it today, I can continue tomorrow because I've got a couple of questions that I need to get to right away. Lit. So I did a little bit of work over the uh, uh, the last couple of days because I really love the lithium area, lithium, global X, lithium and battery uh, tech fund. This is the, basically an ETF. LIT is a symbol LIT, 7961 down 70 cents. And it's got an alternate count, G-C. Uh, there's a lot that says, yes, there's still residual strength, but it's weakening quite quickly technically. So I like it. It is in the leg D in the weekly chart. I I would say this. Now, I don't know the question. If you're in it, I think that you are in it. If you're in it, I'm going to suggest I like it very much. I'm a little worried about the monthly chart because it's got this right arm extension. It's actually it's called a right shoulder failure potential pattern. It's like the dreaded H. And the weekly chart is showing strength except for the last two days, and I don't like that in a leg D. But I do like the area. I think from everything I've read, and I'm doing some uh, fundamental statements here, which are not really uh, – I, I don't know enough about it. I'm just saying things that I've read and things that I've heard. This is an area that should be in play for a while, in the battery, lithium, tech fund. But it's very mixed. Some are working and some are not. So I like it very much. I am going to suggest, because I looked at many of the lithium stocks, and I wonder, if, do I have it on this page? Yes, I do. LAC, LAC is um, Lithium America's Core, Lithium Pro Projects in Argentine and USA. This is a peak F, just pulling back mildly in the daily. The weekly chart has that pattern. And I like the pattern if it can continue rallying, because it makes the cup formation. But if it starts to fail, then all of a sudden, in other words, at 30.26 right now, if in the next, going all the way to the end of August for the monthly candle, if that monthly candle starts to see it in the 2750s or lower, that's just going to say, oh, geez, it's so hard. It's such a struggle. Why is it a struggle? It's the same thing that I'm talking about when I look at Hack, which is the, um, uh, this is this prime cyber security ETF. Uh, why is this so low? This one should be up near the highs of, of 68 uh, something's wrong. Surely people need everyone, all the, maybe a couple, a handful of companies are really leading the charge when it comes to prime cyber security. But even when I look at PANW, uh, Palo Alto, it's just stuck in the lower range. So this is the same thing that's happening in lithium. What, you, what the idea portends and what the reality uh, actually connotates is that there's a lot of work to be done before lithium, the whole lithium, uh, global X, lithium and battery tech ETF is really trading up in the 120s and leading the leading the charge, as they say. So I do like it. And all I'm going to say is that on LIT, I would be a little, I, if you've got a really good gain in it, I take a little bit off now part of money management and maybe put it back at 79 right now, put it back in the 70. 7 to 76 area. Maybe it's not worth it for two points, but that's kind of the way I'd play it. I wouldn't be adding right now. I think it needs a little time to digest the gains. But looking out, my target is 83 to 87. Now, looking out could be weeks or maybe a month and a half. I hope that helps you. Um, it could even be a little longer. It needs to close nicely above um, this left side or a time match which it's hit exactly, and now it needs the next level of resistance is the week of the first, the week of the seventh of January, 
the high was 86. So that's kind of your target. Uh, it should be a minimum target if this is very bullish going to a leg D in the monthly chart and it's made a peak C. All right. Next question was, did that, did that, did that, I did that. Uh, Archie, uh, IWM. So the IWM, this is very interesting and, and it's kind of important because I haven't finished the notations on, I mean, all my drawings of the, the, the patterns, but the the monthly chart held a one, is a one, one, what is it? Yeah, 168 uh, decline, a 1.68, I believe, yes, uh, decline, and now it's trying to rally, and it's, it's gone, uh, on the monthly chart, it's gone above the 200 period moving, so, no, the 14 period moving average. Um, I like what I'm seeing in the shorter term. If by Tuesday or Wednesday of this coming week, IWM is not closed under, is that 197? It hasn't closed under 193, but in fact, it's just chopping around and it even attempts to go to 202.00 for leg G. Uh, it could be an alternate count. Even that could be an alternate. That'll be great. That'll be what you want to see. Meantime, what I am going to do is to say, I've got a, a pattern that says if in the next three weeks, a worst case basis is that the IWM, the Russell 2000, does not close below 188, but can really go sideways. I think that's a good sign for the general market. All right, next question came in. Um, could I look at Baba? Baba. Uh, Baba is trading near the low that it made recently. I'm still going to contend. There is no reason to be in Chinese stocks as the Chinese A Amazon Alibaba. Well, that's what they said. I don't know what it is anymore. But I just, uh, I just, uh, I see no reason. We've got enough. Look at this. Cisco comes out with great earnings. Spikes today to 49.69, up three. Uh, this is a leg E right on the 200 period moving average that it was way, way below, right? But when you look at the weekly and the monthly charts, I mean, it was a 64.29 in December, and then it plummets down to the 40, uh, 41 area. I mean, 20, that's 60 percent. That's a that's a huge decline. So I'm just suggesting to you that a lot of work needs to be done, even with stocks that are acting very well. And I, I looked at Cisco recently and I thought, uh, 5G, cybersecurity, subscription transition, Cisco systems, uh, is that really in the sweet spot? Well, it, just, it was making a steady, look at this beautiful channel. Look at this, if you're looking at resistance levels, look at that channel. And then it just broke that channel with the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. What repellent zone? In the 46s, I'm trading now at 49.70. That's what it means when things really pick up. And that's a very good market sign that Cisco is doing well. Does it hold is the big question. But I like this rotation. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. Yesterday, there was a, a, a stock that I was asked about, <clears throat> UV Limited NTR. And I said, hmm, this is one of my favorite patterns. And I drew in this little, I said it's very short. And if it's very short, it can very quickly break to the upside. And as I said, this is one of my favorite patterns. I remind myself, I didn't say it out loud, but I said to myself, oh, man, that's exactly what you said yesterday in tennis. That's my favorite shot, but then you missed it. Um, so... Um, this is one of my favorite patterns. And in, fa in fact, I should have said, oh, uh, today should be the day that it gaps to the upside or at least tries to get to a leg D. Well, lo and behold, today is the day that it gaps to the upside. And it went above that peak C, which was at uh, 9271. What is this pattern? Oh, am I going to be able to find it? I shouldn't have said that before I was ready. Oh, okay, I'm ready. It's this pattern here. You remember uh, in the Chapman Way methodology, there's a pattern that I talk about making higher highs, and then all of a sudden it stops dead, and it turns around and it makes lower highs and much lower lows. Then if it forms a base and takes out that resistance trend line, it can go very quickly to or just above the left side high. Sometimes it's much longer in duration, but the one that I love is when it's just a couple of bars and you break to the upside, exactly what's happening here. So uh, this is for... Uh, let me move that away. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, good grief. Okay, this is for the question of um, zip. NTR, I didn't mean to, I think we did it yesterday, right? Uh, you asked about it. So NTR is doing exactly what we wanted. That's the monthly chart PE. This is a nice rebound off the 9 and 14 period moving averages after a green Chapman Wave Roman candle, a positive one. A close the very next bar above the high is really really very positive. It turns the whole area of the mid the open and close, but in this case right here, it is the in the monthly chart open was seventy eight eighty five. So it turns 78.85 and it's trading at 93.38. That 78 area, 82, 78 is really strong support. Um, okay, so there is, and I didn't get to draw this. I was going to talk about it and I thought, oh, you've spoken about one, you don't have to speak about two. But this is also one of my favorite patterns. When you create a very narrow channel to the downside, it's like a Chapman Way falling axe formation, except it really is a, a channel. You've got a parallel lower highs, and parallel low lows, and then it turns around. So that's a parallel, and that's a little bit different to the Chapman Wave uh, falling axe formation, the expanding cone, because in this particular instance, there's usually a very significant bounce away from the rectangle, and then you, it suddenly stalls and you're on your own. You have to, okay, now what happens next? When you get it with this uh, expanding wedge formation, in, in the shorter term, like that, that leg D, it says, great, because now it's very easy to visualize because it says this whole area that it broke away from in this particular instance 
it makes an area of 91.40 and it's a 93.35 your first support and if at any point after this it takes out this low right here the low of the 15th of 88.84 it means uh oh now it's going to affect the the longer term which is now the weekly chart from the daily and you're going to stall for a while longer if it takes if it pulls back after this and at any point it even touches 95 it could then start i've seen this happen in the transportation index very often when, it, when whatever it is you're following really picks up steam that instrument can really move very very quickly so talking about uh, uh, transportation i don't know if this is a transportation but the question came in no it wasn't that there was a question that came in about okay we did that we did that yeah sfl so sfl i remember the symbol yeah i'm very good at remembering symbols not always the names i remember the symbol well but i haven't looked at it for a long time and it said sfl when i went in to find out what it is um it turns out that it is it turns out to be the luckiest day of the so it's trading at 11.29 um and i the only thing I've got here is this SFL Corporation uh, has a unique track record in the maritime industry, paying dividends every quarter since 2004. Uh, managed fleet of approximately 70 vessels. So talking about uh, talking about transportation, this is in the shipping industry. Fabulous action, making new recovery high, testing the monthly PD. I like this very much, and considering it's at eleven dollars and twenty nine cents. Um, it is a tad overbought. Now, I'm, I'm having a little trouble here. I, I need to talk about this. <sighs> I don't know. Today says that maybe I should hold off for Friday. Technical Friday. I'll leave it for Technical Friday. I'll put Friday, SFL. This is a Chapman Wave. Uh, unconventional fat-based restart, which says if this starts to fail, it can come all the way back over the next three weeks. There could be a test of the tens. This is the low right here, the low of. Uh, 971. It could come all the way back there because that was an instant restart going to an E slash A, but then it pulled back. So all I can say is I love the action right now. I love the fact that it's making the Groucho Marks U-shaped pattern or V-shaped pattern uh, with the eyebrows right there. The last major high was back in the uh, third week of June uh, at 11.60. And then it pulled back to the 870, 860, 870 area. And now it's made this almost a single leg. It is a single leg to the upside to retest that high. That's a really good sign. But this is where you start to see some kind of uh, resistance. That doesn't mean to say it couldn't touch 1170 or 1180 even. Uh, or even touch 1220 and then pull back. But it's, I, I like it very much. Would I get into it right now? That's tough because you can't even split it. Let's just say you bought it at 11.32 right now with a big move yesterday. If it just gives back some of that move and goes back to the 10.70 area, that's 10% or more on the downside. This is real tough for me, but you are in it, I believe. So if you're in it, wait a little bit. Let's look at it again maybe in the middle of next week. If it's under 10%. 90 but above 1070 that might be a really good entry point so i like it very much i like it in the in the monthly i like it in the weekly chart just about to bump into oh let me just do this sfl let's go to chapman wave automated resistance levels sfl resistance support yep it's got nothing on the upside until 1163 1174 but that goes way back to june uh, let's see, this is the 10 minute chart and this is the 120 minute chart. Uh, okay, so yeah, and the weekly chart says, yep, it's about to bump into a lot of resistance. Um, it still gives you another 30, 40 cents, but the monthly chart, once it breaks out, there's nothing in the monthly. Let's see what the 120 minute chart shows. Yeah, I, I, I just I like it very much. It's just a, if it was a new entry. An add to entry is fine because you're really in it and you've got a nice profit. But I do I wouldn't want to average down because you're buying it here and you're going to see a, a dollar pullback. I'd much rather have patience to wait for a good entry point because this on the on the longer term is starting to act very, very well. All right, next question came in. Let's see if I can get to that. Um, oh, yeah, Duffy, here. I saw this go by in the ticker on the CNBC ticker a number of times. 
And I, I've looked at this over the year uh, for quite some time. My uh, ear is hearing this, uh, what is it called? Ear is called AR. That's the second. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Yeah, so thank you, Doctor, for that. Ergo, Inc., a consumer focused medical device company, develops and sells hearing aids to assist people with hearing loss in the United States. Okay, and then it changed its name. It was called ARIA Innovations. I'm almost sure this was the symbol A-R-I-A. I even remember it in my opening call. I'm almost sure we had it as a, as a position once. So I wonder if they've changed their name because of lawsuits or anything. Why would they have changed their name? I guess, uh, yeah, maybe it's a symbol. Uh, anyway, so yeah, we'll, uh, I'll be following this. It really whip you. I wouldn't, I, I just hold off right now. The question came in about uh, CLF. CLF, this is Cleveland, there we go, Cleveland Cliffs Inc., flat roll steel, it's just made a peak D, how important is a peak D, it couldn't get to the 200 period moving average, that usually says, oh, just be a little careful now, that's, it's still a repellent, it's not a magnet yet, until it can get to, it's at 50, 1846, until it can start trading in the 1983, 20.33 area, um, it's going to be, it's now a repellent, so I just, Oh, is it to add to add or reduce? I wouldn't. I wouldn't add right now, and I actually wouldn't reduce. Let's give it another day because if it can hold here and then bounce to the 19.13 area by Monday, 
that's going to say it's just in a console. It's attempting to get to that 200 period moving average rather than being repelled. So just at the moment, I'm going to say, hold off. Next question came in. I'll do it real quickly. Uh, IWM. So I'm going to do a lot more on the IWM tomorrow because I want to see how the market closes today. A lot of selling pre a lot of selling pressure on rallies, but not intense selling pressure to take the, the indices down. Even the semiconductors are acting quite well. There's still residual strength based on my technicals. So I like the IWM. I'm beginning to think that this is telling us a big story about September. And then we'll talk about it. Let me tell you, spend a little time on it tonight, and tomorrow I'll talk about it. IWN. And there was one more question. Well, you were great programming coming up. I'm sure other questions at Apple. Oh, I want to do Apple as well. Doesn't matter. There's a lot to do. Tomorrow I'll do it. And uh, have a rest, a wonderful rest of the day. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, and stay tuned for great programming. Steve Rhodes comes up. What better than that? I'll see you tomorrow.